Hey everybody, Joe Casaboni here, and today I'm going to show you how to use Beaver Builder modules, rows, and layouts with Gutenberg. So recently I redesigned my personal website, casabona.org, and I used a Studio Press theme called Authority Pro. I really liked the way that they laid out the content. It was very similar to how I wanted to redesign my site. And one thing that the fine folks over at Studio Press did was lean heavily into Gutenberg and the block editor. So I decided to do the same thing, replacing the Beaver Builder driven pages, most of them, with block driven pages. However, one thing that is missing from the Gutenberg blocks, even the ones that are added by Studio Press, is a really good newsletter signup form with ConvertKit integration. They do have a newsletter signup block and uh, it integrates really well with MailChimp and it's included in the demo content and in the plugins that they download when you set up the theme, but it only works with MailChimp and I don't use that. And I personally love the Beaver Builder newsletter or subscribe form module because it integrates so easily with so many services, including ConvertKit. So what you're seeing on the screen now is mostly a block driven group, but the form is actually a Beaver Builder module. So let's take a look at how I did that. First, I should let you know that we are going to be using a short code here. This is where the magic happens, really. Uh, Beaver Builder has a short code that allows you to insert any of their layouts using a short code with slug or ID. And I'm going to go with ID just because it's the easiest one. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that right here right now while I'm on the documentation page. And let's go to the admin. Now, this is my staging site, which is why we have purple here. I've probably mentioned this in previous videos, but if you're going to have a staging and a production site, I strongly recommend you change the admin theme on one of them to let you know quickly that you're not on your production site. So I'm going to go to Beaver Builder, and then there is a section called Templates. Uh, and I should mention, actually, before that, let's actually go to Settings Beaver Builder. You might have to turn that on. So under Settings Beaver Builder, there's a section called Templates, and you need to enable Templates. So make sure you have that done first. Then you can go to Beaver Builder Templates. And I have a lot saved here. I've created a bunch of stuff over uh, the years of using Beaver Builder. But you also have saved rows, columns, and modules. So this is great for a few reasons. First of all, uh, doing rows or columns really in Gutenberg is uh, still a little clunky. For example, if you want like a full width background on a quote unquote row of columns or a, a row of content rather, it's kind of difficult to do that in Gutenberg. And... To be fair, Gutenberg is not really a page builder. It's a way for you to build flexible content. So, uh, you know, if you want to use Gutenberg as a page builder and not really use Beaver Builder, then there are some decisions you need to make here. But for me, I'm using Beaver Builder for uh, a lot of previously created landing pages, especially those for when I do speaking events or uh, have a special offer going. I still like to use Beaver Builder for those landing pages. So I'm keeping Beaver Builder installed. It's, it's an asset to me. Uh, and they have a lot of modules that you can in turn use in Gutenberg. So I'm going to go to saved modules here. And the module that I have on the page is called uh, subs CK Subscribe. So if I click through to here, I uh, have already created this. So I'll launch Beaver Builder. And you can see that I have this module that I can modify. And so there's a bunch of information here. Let's go ahead and start from scratch so you can see the full process. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard. It's frustrating that I got booted out. Uh, and I'll do saved module again. And I'll click add new. 
And then there's some information that they're going to ask me. So uh, the title, type of module, uh, or type, saved module, saved row, or template, and then the module I want to use. So let's just say uh, I want to do a number or a countdown, right? That's a good module. So um, it's almost Black Friday here, so I'll do BFCM countdown. Uh, I can make this saved row or module global, which means if I change it one place, I'll change it everywhere. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'll click add saved module and then I'll launch Beaver Builder. And now I have the countdown module here and I can change that. So uh, it's going to count down to a particular date. I want that date to be Black Friday, which is the 27th uh, at, we'll say midnight. And the time zone, uh, so I'm in the Eastern time zone. So I will find uh, New York. Uh, New York, there we are. And then we can change the style. So do we want numbers or numbers and circles? Let me dock this so we can actually see all the settings and the countdown. So if we do numbers and circles, okay, that looks pretty interesting, but that's a lot. So I'm going to just do numbers. I can change the number color and the text color as well as the background. So I like the background color to be uh, to, to pop out a little bit. Uh, so I will pick one of my saved colors here, yellow. Eh, I don't really like the look of that. Let's do my standard blue, and then we'll make the number and text colors white. All right, so we've got a nice countdown here. We can show a separator if we want. This is really more of a tutorial in uh, Beaver Builder at this point. <laughs> so we can also change the, the padding and the text sizes and things like that. We can even change the separator. I'm going to change it to a colon. This is time, mostly. Uh, and the separator color. Uh, we can't do a nifty thing like a flip down, which we would, I think we can do with other Beaver Builder module packs, like ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder, but that's okay. That's not the point of this, uh, this exercise, this video. So I'm going to save this. Then I'm going to click Done and Publish. So now we have our module, but we need to grab the ID uh, because that's what we're doing. If we were doing the slug, I believe the slug is probably uh, BFCM dash countdown. But just to be sure, I'm going to show my menu bar here because in the URL, we have post equals and then we have the ID, which is 31213. So we'll remember that. Let's go to, uh, this is again, the staging site. So we'll go ahead and put it on the home page and I'll hide my address bar again. So I'll click edit page. And then I will scroll down to a place where maybe it makes the most sense. Uh, maybe right around here. I will click add block. And then I want the short code block. And then remember I copied the short code, which is FL underscore builder underscore insert underscore layout. And we will add the ID 31213. So now if I click update and we view the page, we'll scroll down and we have that countdown. So that's it for this video. In it, I showed you how to use a Beaver Builder module using Gutenberg and the Beaver Builder shortcode. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more great content.